Welcome back to LA. We are live in Los Angeles at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 21, Lisa Martin and Dave Nicholson. We've been talking to folks all day. Great to be here in person. About 2,700 folks are here. The Kubernetes, the community, the CNCF community is huge, 138,000 folks. Great to see some of them in person back collaborating once again. Dave and I are pleased to welcome our next guest. We have Sarish Raghuram, co-founder and CEO of Platform9. Sarish, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure to be here. Give our audience an overview of Platform9. Who are you guys, what do you do, when were you founded, all that good stuff. So we are about seven years old. Uh, we were founded with a mission to make it easy to run private, hybrid, and edge clouds. Um, my co-founders and I were early engineers at VMware. And what we realized is that it's really easy to go use the public cloud because the public clouds have this innovation, which is they have a, a control plane, which serves as a, a, it serves as a foundation for them to launch a lot of services and make that really simple and easy to use. But if you need to get that experience in a private cloud or a hybrid cloud or in the edge, um, nobody gives you a, that cloud control plane. You get it from Amazon in Amazon, you get it from Azure in Azure, Google in Google, who gives you a SaaS cloud control plane to run private clouds or edge clouds or hybrid clouds? Nobody. And this is, uh, this is what we do. So this is, we make it easy to run these clouds using technologies like Kubernetes with our, our SaaS control plane. Now is it limited to Kubernetes? Because when you, 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 you mentioned your background at VMware, uh, is this a control plane for what people would think of as private clouds using VMware style abstraction? Or is this primarily cloud native? So when we first started, actually, Docker did not exist. Like it, okay. So, so uh, at the time, our first product to market was actually an infrastructure as a service product. And at the time, we looked at what is, what is out there. We knew VMware vSphere was out there. It's a VMware technology. There was uh, Apache Cloud Stack and OpenStack. And we said, look, the open ecosystem around VMs and infrastructure as a service is OpenStack. So we chose open source as the lingua franca for the service endpoint. So our control plane, we deliver OpenStack as a service. That was our first product. Uh, when Kubernetes, when the announcement of Kubernetes came out from Google, we knew at that time we were going to go launch, because we'd already been studying LXC and, and Docker, um, we knew at the time we were going to standardize on Kubernetes because we believed that an open ecosystem was forming around that. That was a big bet for us. You know, this, this, this foundation and this, this community is proof that that was a good bet. And today that's actually a flagship, flagship product. It's our, you know, the biggest, biggest share of revenue, biggest share of install base. Uh, but we do have more than one product. We have OpenStack as a service, we have bare metal as a service, we have containers as a service with Kubernetes. I want to ask you some of the, the, I'm looking at your website here, platform9.com. Some of the, the three marketing messages, I want you to break these down for me. Simplified day two ops, multi-cloud ready on day one, and we know so many businesses are multi-cloud and the percentage is only going up, and faster time to market. Talk to me about this, Rui. Let's start with simplified day two ops. How do you enable that? So, you know, one of the biggest, if you talk to anyone who runs like a large VMware environment and you ask them, when was the last time you did an upgrade? Or for that matter, somebody who's running like a large scale Kubernetes environment or an OpenStack environment, uh, probably in a private cloud deployment, I ask them, when was the last time you did an upgrade? How did that go? When was the last time you had an outage? Who did you call? How did that go, right? And you'll hear an outpouring of emotion, okay? Same thing, you go ask people, when you use Kubernetes in the public cloud, how do these things work? And they'll say it's pretty easy, it's, it's not that hard. And so the question, the idea of Platform 9 is why is there such a divide? There's this, you know, we talk about digital divide, there is a cloud divide. The public clouds have figured out something that the rest of the industry has not. And people suffer with private clouds. There's a lot of demand for private clouds. Very few people can make it work because they try to do it with a lot of like Hand, handheld tools and you know, limited automation skills and scripting. What you need is you need the automation that makes sure that ongoing troubleshooting, 24 by seven alerting, upgrades to new versions are all fully managed. When Amazon doesn't upgrade to a new version, people don't have to worry about it. They don't have to stay up at night. They don't have to deal with outages. You shouldn't have to deal with that in your private cloud. So those are the kinds of problems, right? The troubleshooting, the upgrades, the, the remediation when things go wrong that are taken for granted in the public cloud that we bring to the customers who want to run them in private or hybrid or edge cloud environments. How do you help customers, and what does future-proofing mean? Like, how do you help customers future-proof their cloud native journey? What does that mean to Platform 9, and what does that mean to your customers? I'll give you, one of my favorite stories is actually one of our early customers uh, is Snapfish. Uh, it's a photo sharing company, it's a consumer company, right? When they got started with us, 
Uh, they were coming off of VMware. They wanted to run an OpenStack environment. They started nearly four years ago. And they started using us with OpenStack and VMs and infrastructure as a service. Fast forward to today, 85% of the usage on us is containers. And they didn't have to hire OpenStack experts, nor did they have to hire Kubernetes experts, but their application development teams got, went from moving from a somewhat legacy VMware-style IT environment to a modern self-service developer experience with OpenStack, and then to containers and Kubernetes. And we're going to, we're going to work on the next generation of innovation with serverless technologies, simplifying you know, building modern, more elastic applications. And so our control plane, the beauty of our model is our control plane adds value. It added value with OpenStack, it added value with Kubernetes, it'll add value with what's next uh, around the evolution of serverless technologies. Right? It's evergreen, and our customers get the benefit of all of that. So when you talk about managing environments that are on-premises and in clouds, I assume you're talking hyperscale clouds like AWS, Azure, GCP. Um, what kind of infrastructure needs to be deployed? And when I say infrastructure, that can be software. What needs to be deployed in, say, uh, AWS for this to work? What does so, that look like? So some 30% of our users use us on, in the public cloud, and the majority of that actually happens in AWS uh, because they're the number one cloud. Um, and we really give people three choices, right? So they can choose to use and consume AWS the way they want to. So we have a small minority of customers that actually provisions bare metal servers in AWS. That's a small minority because there are specific use cases they're trying to do, and they try to deploy like Kubernetes on bare metal, but the bare metal happens to be running on AWS. Okay? That's a small minority. A larger majority of our users in AWS, or some or hyperscale cloud, brings their VPC under management. So they come in, get started, sign up with Platform 9. In their Platform 9 uh, control plane, they go and say, I want to plug in this VPC, and I want to give you this much authorization to this VPC. And in that VPC, we essentially can impersonate them and on their behalf provision nodes and provision clusters using our Kubernetes, uh, open source Kubernetes, upstream CNCF Kubernetes. But we also have customers that said, hey, I already have some clusters with EKS. I really like what the rest of your platform allows me to do. And I think it's a better platform for me to use uh, for a variety of reasons. Can you bring my EKS clusters under management and then help me provision new, new clusters on top? And the answer is you can. So you can choose to bring your bare metal you can choose to bring your VPC and just provision like your virtual machine and treat them as nodes for Kubernetes clusters, or you can bring pre-built Kubernetes clusters and manage them using our management uh, product. What, what are your routes to market? So we have three routes to market. Um, we have a completely self-serve, completely free forever uh, uh, experience where people can just go sign up, uh, log in, get access to the control plane, and be up and running within minutes, right? Uh, they can plug in their server hardware on premises at the edge in the cloud, their VPCs, and they can be up and running. From there, they can choose to upsell into a, grow into an, a growth tier or you know, choose to request for more support and a higher touch experience and work with our, our sales team and get into an enterprise tier. And our, that is our second go to market, which is a, a direct go to market. Uh, companies in the retail space, companies, tech companies, uh, companies in fintech, companies that are investing in digital transformation in a big way, have lots of software developers and are adopting these technologies in a big way, but want private or hybrid or edge clouds. That's the second go-to-market. The third, and, and in the last two years this is new to us, really exciting go-to-market to us is uh, a partner-led partner go-to-market where partners like Rackspace have OEM platform nine. So we have a partnership, deep partnership with Rackspace, all of Rackspace's customers and their install base, essentially, including customers who are consuming public cloud services via Rackspace, get access to Platform 9 and Rackspace working together with Rackspace's uh, ability to kind of service the whole, whole mile. Uh, and also, uh, we have a very important partnership with Mavenir in the 5G space. So 5G, we think, is a large opportunity. And there's a, there's a joint product there called Mavenir WebScale Platform to run 5G networks on our Kubernetes stack. So Platform 9, why? What does that mean? Harry Potter? Harry Potter, so it's platform nine and three quarters, okay? We had this realization, my co-founders and I were at VMware for 10, for 10, 15 years, and we were struggling with this problem of why is the public cloud so easy to use? Why is it so hard to run a private cloud? And even today, I think not many people realize, uh, and that's the analogy to platform nine and three quarters, it's like, it's right in the middle of King's Cross Station, you go through it and you enter a whole new world of magic. That, that secret door, that platform nine and three quarters is a SaaS control plane. That is a secret sauce that Amazon has and Azure has and Google has. 
And we're bringing that for anybody who wants to use it on any infrastructure of their choice. Where can customers go to learn more about Platform9? So platform9.com, uh, follow us on Twitter, Platform9sys, or on LinkedIn. You know, and, and if any of uh, our viewers are here at KubeCon, they can stop by your booth. What are some of the things that you're featuring there? We are the booth, uh, we have our, our product managers, we have our support engineers, we have the people that are actually doing the real work behind the product right there. We're talking about our roadmap, we're talking about the product demos, we're doing like specific show, talks on specific deep dives in our product, and we're also talking about some, some really cool things that are coming up uh, in the garage. Uh, in the, in the next six months. Can you leave us with any teasers about what some of the cool things are that are coming up in the garage? Yeah, one, one, one thing that is a really big deal is, um, uh, is the ability to manage Kubernetes clusters as, as, as cattle, right? Kubernetes makes node management and app management, lets you treat them as cattle instead of pets. But Kubernetes clusters themselves, our customers tell us, like even in Amazon, EKS and others, these clusters themselves become pets and they become hard to manage. So we have a, a really, really interesting capability to manage these as more as, you know, from infrastructure as code with GitOps uh, as cattle. We actually have an, an announcement that I'm not able to share at this point, which is coming out in two weeks uh, in the edge space. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. So folks can go to platform9.com. Platform9.com. Check out that announcement two weeks. Two weeks from now. By the end of October. That's right. Awesome, Shivers, thank you so much for joining us. I love the fact that you asked that question because I kept thinking, Platform 9, where do I know that from? And I just Googled, Harry Potter. That's right. Platform yeah. 9 and 3 quarters. I'm dying because I didn't automatically make the correlation because my son and I are the most unbelievable Potter heads ever. Yeah, well, so <laughs> we have that in common. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome, thank you for joining us, sharing what Platform 9 is, some of the exciting stuff coming out, and two weeks? In learn to weeks. hear some great news about the edge. Absolutely. Awesome, Shurs. Thank you for joining My us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, our pleasure as well. For Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin, live in Los Angeles. The Cube is covering KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 21. Stick around. We'll be right back with our next guest.